good morning today we are going to discuss on rubber products products made from rubber i have mentioned uh, in previous lectures that the names of different polymers showing elastomeric characteristics rubbery characteristics visco elastic characteristics rubbers are flexible soft and it has got ample free volume which can accommodate large number of additives uh, including fillers in which fillers quantity is the highest and which is very high means uh, it can go up to uh, 800 to 1000 parts in 100 part of rubber you know what are the rubbers basic uh, names of uh, rubber uh, molecules say natural rubber which is cis polyisoprene synthetic rubbers styrene butadiene copolymer polybutadiene rubber polychloroprene rubber ethylene propylene rubber ethylene propylene diene rubber butyl rubber which is a copolymer of <coughs> isobutylene with a small quantity of uh, isoprene monomer purposefully introduced as a co-monomer to develop a uh, cross-linking or vulcanization site or curing site. Then other rubbers say acrylic rubbers, fluorinated rubbers or fluoro rubbers, fluoroelastomers, silicone rubber and other polar rubbers like thiocol rubber which are which is polysulfide rubber, hypalon rubber, chlorosulfonated polyethylene. So, this way we can uh, tell the names of uh, many rubber polymers which shows elastomeric characteristics and these polymers are blended with large number of additives and the total number of additives can go as high as 30 in numbers. Uh, 30 different additives are normally incorporated and there are few products where the numbers may be less and these additives are known as the functional additives that means they have certain functions or roles to play during the fabrication processing of the rubber product as well as during the service of the rubber product when we use. Okay. Now, uh, this uh, slide shows um, uh, the components, the major components present in a rubber product base polymer, this base polymer may be natural rubber, styrene butane rubber, polyisoprene rubber, butyl rubber. Okay. Uh, polybutane rubber, chlorophyll rubber are the names I have mentioned already. And filler system means uh, we have to incorporate fillers which increases the volume of the product, our product as well as sometimes there are certain fillers which imparts certain improvements in properties to uh, they develop some broad spectrum of properties in the rubber products. Uh, then processing system, uh, the processing system, processing aid system. Uh, this is <coughs> uh, used in order to uh, incorporate and disperse the additives which are going to include in our product and that means it decreases the viscosity, increases the fluidity and helps in incorporation and dispersion of these additives. Stabilizer system, it stabilizes the polymer, the rubber from the degradation uh, present in the environment. I mean the agencies like oxygen, ozone, heat, electromagnetic radiation like ultraviolet radiation, these actually degrade the polymers because these polymers are hydrocarbon in nature and those are broken down, molecular weight is reduced, sometimes cross linking occurs and it affects the final properties of the polymer. So, in order to protect from such degradations the stabilizers are used and which actually stabilize those degradation, they do not allow the polymer to be degraded. And then is the curing system, a curing actually these rubber products, majority of the rubber products except thermoplastic elastomer, these are all vulcanizable or vulcanized products or cross linked products that means these are at the final form of the product, these are uh, thermoset type. So, these are they are in the final form 
these products are insoluble in solvents as well as infusible by heat. So, they are stable. So, for that purpose some curing agent or cross linking agent or vulcanizing agent, uh, vulcanizing agent, uh, vulcanizing agent and uh, these are used with the rubber product and they help in cross linking the rubber molecules in order to convert it to thermoset structure from thermoplastic. Okay. I will discuss the details of these systems. This then miscellaneous additives I mean say for development of anti-static property in order to in order not to uh, your store your uh, what is that called um, development of static charge accumulation of static charge on the product that uh, causes attraction of dust and other things. So, uh, this is not good for any product. So, if there is some anti-static agent mixed with the product then that will not uh, uh, that will not uh, help uh, that will not uh, actually allow this dust particle to uh, be attracted to the products and not only that some fire retarding agents fire retarding agents or flame retarding agents are needed to increase the flame resistance properties or fire resistance properties of the product and sometimes abrasive powders in order to get some abrading action say abrading wheel that is used for abrading of some other surfaces for that purpose some, sometimes say hard particle particles of hard materials <coughs> say carborandum powder carborandum powder. So, these are incorporated in the product as miscellaneous additives. <coughs> Along with this there may be some tachyfying agents there may be some softness. So, all these come in this miscellaneous category. Now, let us look into what is there in the curing system. Now, this in the curing system cross linking or vulcanizing agents are there means for the rubbers there are cross linking agents like sulfur, selenium and tellurium in the group of the periodic table you see they, are, they belong to the same group sulfur, selenium, tellurium when they are mixed with rubber they react chemically with the rubber molecules to link to link to uh, the two molecules. Uh, side by side, so that intermolecular linkage is developed through sulfur atom that means through monosulfide to disulfide to polysulfide linkages. Uh, it, uh, it cross links or uh, forms a three dimensional network structure. So, that is actually the, the, uh, the effect of cross linking agent and in order to promote the reaction in order to help the reaction between sulfur and rubber some accelerator is used which accelerates the reaction speed between sulfur and polymer for that purpose accelerator is used. Accelerators are compounds of uh, uh, organic compounds these are mostly amine derivatives amine derivatives accelerators are amine derivatives. So, these accelerators for cross linking are used in the rubber product uh, for uh, decreasing the vulcanization time for example, uh, in a normal vulcanization by sulfur only without using any accelerator it takes about uh, say more than 8 hours time which is not economically viable or industrially feasible. Now, by using these accelerators and accelerator activators all these things these uh, ingredients uh, it has been found that the vulcanization time has been reduced from 8 hours to 5 minutes or even 2 minutes. You see the effect or influence or the role of accelerators how it is important and how it is essential in our products you can understand from this uh, phenomena. Then accelerator modifiers you see this is again another category of this curing another uh, member of the curing system accelerator modifier means now when we are incorporating this sulfur cross linking agent and accelerators. So, these decompose at the vulcanization temperature or when the temperature of the rubber compound increases then these compounds may decrease as uh, uh, your degrade decompose and form free radicals and those free radicals actually takes part in forming cross linking bonds. Okay. Now, during processing and fabrication the 
rubber compound has to pass through these machineries at elevated temperature say it may be sometimes the temperature goes uh, as high as 80 to 90 degree or even 100 degree Celsius temperature. Now, at that temperature there may be uh, the decomposition of a part of the uh, your cross linking agent as well as the accelerators and there during processing and uh, fabrication or before fabrication of the final finishing or shaping of the item it may start vulcanization and cross linking. Now, if it starts then what will happen? It will not flow properly and it will not fill the cavity of the mold. So, it will affect the shape and dimension of the properties. So, that a, uh, your product. So, this is not good for such uh, products. So, we have to control such type of uh, adverse effects for controlling that we have to use some modifier. These modifiers may be of two kinds. One is <coughs> retarder mostly modifiers are retarders retarder retarder mainly. that means that retards the vulcanization that retards the vulcanization or premature vulcanization or premature cross linking before final shaping retarder molecules are used say cyclohexyl n cyclohexyl thiothalamide n cyclohexyl thiothalamide this is a compound which is used for the retardation or retardation of vulcanization or retarding the vulcanization reaction or it is actually a trade name is santo guard P6 PVI. P you can say PVI or P6. PVI in other way you can say pre vulcanization inhibitor. PVI you can say PVI pre vulcanization inhibitor or you can say P6. Okay, this is the trade name of this compound so, N cyclohexyl thiothalamide. I will probably there are certain other examples in uh, subsequent slides I will show you. So, this is about curic system. Then stabilizer system one is antioxidant and the other is antioxidants. Normally those these two classes of stabilizers are used in rubber products. <coughs> then let us look into the composition of rubber product. So, general class in these compositions are base polymer, base polymer I have already mentioned the names here few names are shown here in this slide. Then filler, fillers are carbon black, clays, whiting, silica fillers etcetera. Then processing aid, pet processing agents that increases the fluidity, reduces the viscosity okay, and helps in processing means incorporation and dispersion of the additives, particulate additives in rubber product. Okay. So, that helps in processing say one kind of uh, lubricating effect it will it lubricates these particles. So, that it can enter into that rubber molecules rubber matrix. So, it helps in dispersion ok. Then comes curatives, curatives are cross linking agents I have, I have already uh, described the organic accelerators, organic and inorganic activators promoters and retarders. Okay. There are also again promoters means which promotes again uh, this vulcanization that means further in uh, your increasing of the vulcanization rate sometimes promoters are used along with accelerators and uh, accelerator activators. Okay. Then anti aging compounds, organic compounds are antioxidants and antioxidants, miscellaneous additives, coloring agents, abrasives, antistatic compounds, deodorants all these things. Then, now we have some idea what are the components or ingredients, general ingredients used in rubber product. Okay. Now, we have to make a compound. You know, you have some concept of compound means compound forms by linking of atoms of elements to form a new product that is a compound, chemical compound. So, it is not exact, it is also a chemical compound, but mixture of chemical compounds is rubber, rubber compound. The rubber compound means you are compounding, you are compounding together additives with the 
polymer rubber. So, the process of incorporation and dispersion and forming a semi homogeneous or near to homogeneous blend of these rubbers with the additives is known as a compounding and the compound and the process is known as compounding. And major factors in compounding to be kept in mind before selection of ingredients to formulate a rubber product are price of the ingredients, processing characteristics of the rubber compound and properties of the final rubber compound and the vulcanized product. Keeping in mind all these things, one can go for selection of ingredients, their appropriate dose and then compounding requires serious and careful consideration by the rubber compounder, the person who actually deals with these things, who makes a formulation, who prepares this rubber compound for making a rubber product is known as compounder, rubber compounder. There are positions in rubber industries as rubber compounder, okay. they work in uh, the flows, uh, your, the instruments, these machineries. Then let us look into rubber, this natural rubber, you will see some properties of natural rubber, you will see some properties of synthetic rubbers, little bit for your understanding. So, C14 polyisoprene is natural rubber, you know its structure. Properties of natural rubber is molecular weight. Uh, it is given here uh, to different kinds of molecular weights, mole weight average molecular weight and number average molecular weight. So, uh, this number average molecular weight is little bit wrong here, it is it will be less than 10 to the power 6, okay. uh, it is wrong, this value is wrong, it will be 10 to the power 5 or less than 10 to the power 5, 10 to the power 4 to 10 to the power 5 of this order. And molecular weight distribution is broad and high tag and green strength is required, I have already described before you what is the meaning of tack, tackiness and stickiness and what is the meaning of green strength of the rubber, rubber product. That means, green strength means after making a rubber compound, when we uh, give a green shape prior to curing, prior to curing the shaped item uh, is known as the uh, strength of the item prior to curing is known as green strength. Now, that is under green condition, it is not uh, fully formed or fully cured. Then high tack and green strength and gum strength and good processing characteristics is available with natural rubber and it is a crystallizing rubber means if you stretch it, uh, it is amorphous. If you stretch it, it develops crystallization that means crystallites are formed. So, it increases the tensile strength that is called stress induced crystallization or you can say strain induced crystallization stress induced crystallization or strain in, uh, induced crystallization. The polymers which uh, uh, provides such type of performance or behavior is known as crystallizing polymer. Okay. Then vulcanized properties of natural rubber, tensile strength is you see there is some properties the range is given 17 to 24, it varies from compound to compound, varies from rubber to rubber, it is not fixed, it may be 15 to 28, 30 even here it is shown here 17 to 24, this is not rigid, eh? it is variable okay. depending on the nature of the polymer, depending on the nature and the number of additives and the quantity of additives used in there. Tensile strength of field rubber, field vulcanized is around 24 to 32, okay. then abrasion and wear. Say you think of a rubber tire, when it rolls, rolls on the road surface, the surface is rough. So, so, the outside surface of the wheel which is called tread, tread portion gets worn out due to wear and tear due to friction with the road surface. So, that wear resistance must be there and there must be grip, road gripping otherwise there will be skidding of the wheel after sudden pressing of the brake it should stop immediately. In advanced car you find that even a car is uh, running yeah, to say a speed of say 140 to 150 kilometers per hour that can be stopped within a very short distance. Today that kind of advanced car is has been developed in the world uh, and <coughs> I have the opportunity to see also that kind of car and to travel with that car also. It is so nice. Now that kind of properties actually is available from this rubber. It has a beautiful grip with the road so that it does not skid it should, should not uh, incur any accident all these things and uh, it gives you very good grip in the road grip and uh, skid resistance, uh, wear resistance all these properties. And for improved 
uh, skid resistance. Sometimes oil extended natural rubber is used is used with this thing and actually there is a science underlying this thing. In order to explain that thing, it needs more time if you really want to know that science, you can discuss with me outside this class, I will help you. Okay. Dynamic properties means, uh, you think of again rubber tire, it is under dynamic stress. That means, while the wheel or the wheel is rotating, it is the, the contact between the road and the wheel is under always dynamic stress. Hmm. Stressed, stress uh, your uh, load, uh, applied load, then after uh, ap application it is released. So, continuously it is application and release, application and release. So, this kind of cyclic load is there. So, this is called dynamic stressing and that is actually evaluated in the laboratory uh, uh, in simulated condition um, by flexing machine or fatigue fail to failure machine. That machine is there in our department, that machine is also there. If you are interested, you can see there. So, how, how it fails? Means, it, it fails uh, after initiation of a crack followed by crack propagation. Now, these rubbers are having properties like some rubbers are having uh, resistance to crack initiation, but once a crack is initiated, crack propagates faster. There are some polymers where it, uh, it does not resist crack initiation. Crack may be initiated, but crack propagation rate is slower. So, these properties are available with say for example, natural rubber and SBR they are having just opposite properties these two. So, this way it is the duty of the compounder to select a suitable rubber in his formulation while he is making a tire. That means, he has to keep in mind for which area of the world, which part of the road uh, this car, this wheel has to be performed over there. So, keeping in uh, the keeping that aspect in mind, he will select a suitable rubber. Compression set and creep, you know what is creep? It is a uh, it is a flow properties with time under constant load. Creep is a property of you know, deformation with time at constant stress. Creep is a property of deformation with time, elongation with time at constant stress and at a fixed temperature. Again, if the temperature is increased, the creep property will decrease. That means, it will deform more in less time okay. and relaxation it is again a time dependent phenomena. It is the decrease of stress with time at constant strain, at constant strain due to loosening of the molecules due, due to relaxation of the molecules. Again here is science, beautiful science. If you want to know, you can correlate knowing that science you can correlate the uh, uh, the your um, these uh, creep properties, relaxation properties. Aging, poor but improved antioxidants and antioxidants, uh, uh, antioxidants can uh, prevent such aging characteristics. Synthetic rubbers, there are various polymers available as synthetic rubbers. These are homopolymers, homo polybutadiene is a homopolymer. Styrene butadiene rubber is a copolymer, ethylene propane rubber is a copolymer. Okay. So, there are homopolymers and copolymers which are used as rubber and they are made by polyadditions of or polycondensation reactions of different uh, chemical compounds for making a synthetic rubber. Why synthetic rubber? Why do you go for synthetic rubber? Now, the main reason is if there is shortfall of natural rubber, if it is not available in a country in one country, then they can synthesize rubbers, they can use synthetic rubbers if they do not have to, de they do not have to depend on natural rubber, but if you have plenty of natural rubber, then you may not have to depend on uh, synthetic rubbers, you can use synthetic uh, natural rubber only. To meet the demands for some special properties, why natural rubber fails, you see to meet the demands for some special properties other than availability, uh, if you have a special demand where natural rubber fails, then you can use synthetic rubber for some special purpose application. For example, processability, oil and solvent resistance, low temperature flexibility, heat resistance properties, better dynamic properties, abrasion resistance, environmental stability. For example, say for a petroleum hose in the petrol 
uh, filling stations in the, the in the fuel filling stations where the fuel uh, diesel or petrol is pumped from the reservoir to the car the, the a pipe or a pipe is used that pipe is made of rubber their natural rubber is not suitable because the natural rubber will be swelled even if it is cross linked it will swell in contact with diesel or petrol but if you take some say uh, synthetic rubber special rubber like say nitrile rubber or chlorophyll rubber so that is resistant to uh, swelling in those oil. So, this is one property and there are certain applications uh, for high temperature sealing in oil environment, high temperature sealing. So, uh, environment is high, high temperature as well as in contact with some petroleum oil, there you have to use a special purpose like say silicone rubber or fluoroelastomers uh, will be suitable there. Okay. So, this way we go for special purpose rubbers depending on the uh, properties we need. Then general purpose and on non oil resistant rubbers are these are the examples styrene butyrene rubber, non oil resistant polyisoprene rubber, IR polybutyrene rubber, BR isobutyrene isoprene butyl rubber, ethylene propylene rubber, EPDM, thermoplastic rubbers, these are non oil resistant rubber. That means you cannot make any product which has to perform in contact with oil, I mean petroleum oil, petroleum based oil, not vegetable oil. This is the formula of the basic formula of the styrene butyrene rubber and this is synthesized uh, by emulsion polymerization or solution polymerization. By emulsion polymerization, there are mostly two processes followed today, one is a hot process carried out at 50 degree Celsius, cold process carried out at around 55 to 10 degree Celsius and this process actually gave different microstructures of the polymers and due to the difference in microstructure, their processing characteristics, their final vulcanized properties are dependent on the process by which they are mentioned, they are synthesized and uh, because of those things, there are large number of grades commercially available in the market where such variations are there. So, you have to su select a suitable grade for your rubber product you are going to make. Solution rubber means produced by uh, solution polymerization technique, it gives better grades with controlled microstructure where, we, where you can have a better control on the microstructure. Whatever you want, you can have a control, you can get that uh, microstructure of the polymer. Special purpose rubber, chloropene rubber, chlorosulfonated polyethylene, I have mentioned the names, acrylonitrile butyrene rubber, nitrile rubber, polyacrylic rubbers, fluorocarbon rubbers, silicone rubbers, polyurethane rubbers, ethylene acrylic rubber ethylene vinyl acetate rubber, polysulfide rubber. So, these are all special purpose rubbers. Other these, these examples, there may be many other polymers because you know there is a versatility and tailorability characteristics of the polymers. So, you can make a design, new design of polymer, you can synthesize, you can commercially develop by developing a suitable technology, these special purpose rubbers. Properties of cold SBR, you see some properties are mentioned over here. Uh, this is a CIS14 polybutadiene, it contains a mixture of CIS14 polybutadiene, you can have uh, means butadiene unit. The butadiene unit in the SBR will have certain percentage CIS uh, form, certain percentage trans form, certain percentage, percentage uh, 1 to butadiene, this is wrong, butadiene in uh, E, in place of T it will be E, 1 to butadiene in, okay. 1 to structure or 3 post structure, both are same. Intrinsic viscosity gel content, muni viscosity, ha, muni viscosity you see, what is muni viscosity? Muni viscosity is the viscosity of a rubber compound hmm, before compounding you can measure the muni viscosity of raw rubber poly, rubbery polymer, after compounding prior to vulcanization you can measure the viscosity because this viscosity uh, can tell you can tell you at what temperature, how at what uh, machine speed means RPM revolutions per minute you have to run the machine for getting a rubber compound in a reasonable length of time. Okay. That viscosity actually it is related to the torque developed during processing. So, it is measured by through a torque uh, measurement how it is done? You take a small compound of a small amount of rubber. Now, there is a uh, rotor in a cavity 
that rotor is connected to a motor okay, which is connected to transducer to measure the torque. So, that rotor can be rotated with the help of a motor and within that cavity you place the rubber then close it and that cavity has arrangement of heating. So, uh, supply heat so the temperature is maintained at 100 degree Celsius or some other temperature of standard specification. Okay. So, at that temperature when it equilibrate, equi equilibrate uh, after achieving equilibrium temperature of 100 degree Celsius, then you start the motor. So, it will run for 1 minute first, then after 1 minute uh, you are running, then it will again uh, achieve the equilibrium. Then after 4 minute residence over there, you see how much is the torque. If it is 50, then it is the moving viscosity. The number is 50, the moving viscosity is called 50. If it is 60, moving viscosity is 60. So, at ML is a, uh, 1 plus 4, 100 degrees Celsius. It is reported like this 50, 40, 30, 35, 45, 52, like this. The higher the number, higher the viscosity. Lower the number, lower the viscosity. For gum rubber, sometimes moving viscosity might be, say, uh, 40 to 50. For compounded rubber, where the fillers and other additives have been incorporated, but it is not vulcanized, unvulcanized rubber compound containing the fillers, that moving viscosity may be as high as 60, 64, 70 like that. Okay. So, that tells you how much torque is necessary, how much shear force has to be provided, has to be given in the equipment to uh, during fabrication of the product, say during extrusion, during extrusion how what will be the rotor speed of the extruder. Uh, okay. So, that will be dictated by this uh, moving viscosity number. Okay. So, very high means high viscosity, low means low viscosity. Then specific gravity, these are the properties have been evaluated for synthetic rubbers and that is the same properties are also evaluated prior to vulcanization, prior to compounding etcetera all these things, these properties are evaluated for natural rubber also. And these are the various grades of as I mentioned, various uh, these are available in large number of grades, only few are mentioned over here in order to maintain the clarity or for your comprehension all these things. So, I have only included few grades, there may be many other grades, say within say 1500 category, say there may be 1502, 1505, 1503, 1507 like this. So, those are they, again those are uh, different grades having different minor, minor non major, major, but minor difference in properties there with the internal grades. Starting between rubber applications, tyres, footwear, mechanical goods, sponge, foamed items, waterproofing items, hose, belting, adhesives, carpet backing coating, sometimes sealants, sometimes your, um, your rubber coated fabrics, all these many. So, that means the large number of uh, products can be fabricated from synthetic rubbers as well as from natural rubber. <coughs> now, come to the details of the ingredients. Look at the filler. There are two categories of filler, reinforcing fillers and non-reinforcing fillers. Reinforcing fillers that increases the, improves the strength properties of the rubber compound by their presence. That means, they enter into a direct interaction between the polymer and the filler. So, there will be, if there is some interaction between the polymer and the filler, then we call it is a reinforcing filler. For example, carbon black, the structure of carbon black, structure means physical structure, morphology of carbon black. They say, if you consider a spherical particle of carbon black, the spherical particle of carbon black can be considered as a quasi crystalline, hmm, graphitic layer planes of carbons. Okay. And there is spacing between two layers and it is very light and floppy. That means, there is ample free volume within a carbon black particle. Even if it is very uh, small in diameter say 10 nanometer or uh, 30 nanometer or 50 nanometer or 100 nanometer or 300 nanometer like that. So, there are uh, these free volumes or voids in carbon particle and they are quasi crystalline uh, graphitic planes. Now, each such type of or sphere can be considered as a nodule, nodule 
Now, again there are internodular fusion in a carbon black particle. That means, one carbon black particle is not an isolated spherical carbon black particle. No, there are uh, nodular fusion structure, fusion morphology, fu fused nodular structure. That means, there may be many more such nodules uh, 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 fused one with the other. So, one nodule may be considered like this, layers are there inside, layers are there, fine layers are there like this. So, this is <coughs> these are fused together. So, here the, here is the fusion, 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 here is the fusion. So, this entire fusion fused nodular structure is known as structure of carbon black. There are high structure carbon black. and low structure carbon black. High structure means higher extent of nodular fusion, low structure means lower nodular uh, lower extent of nodular fusion. Now, again uh, they dictate the processing characteristics of a rubber compound while carbon black is used as a filler for incorporation and dispersion. Now, it is known it has been found it has been verified experimental uh, probed that high structure carbon black is difficult to incorporate in rubber compound, but it is easy to disperse. Please note it down high structure carbon black is difficult to incorporate in rubber compound, but it is easy to disperse once it is incorporated with difficulty then the latter part of dispersion becomes easy. High structure means this if this structure is high or long, your longer, then by virtue of their bigger volume, it is difficult to incorporate in rubber, but they are easy to disperse. Because the carbon blacks has a property of agglomeration by virtue of their surface forces, surface energy. Okay. Even if you incorporate in rubber, so they will try to form aggregates or agglomerates. Now, in order to get a better dispersion, that means you have to separate all these things, so that it is well dispersed in the rubber matrix. And that means, each and every small particle should be covered by rubber. Otherwise, there will be if there is some aggregate, that aggregate is made of carbon, there is no polymer, then that is the weak site in the rubber product. And the stress will be concentrated in that weak site and the, the tire or the rubber product will fail at dynamic stressing, dynamic loading. In, okay. So, this is the problem. In order to avoid those problems, overcome those problems, what we need? We have to properly disperse this carbon particle within the rubber. So, here the problem comes high structure carbon blocks, uh, carbon blacks are carbon black particles are difficult to incorporate, but easy to disperse because they do not they are not prone to form aggregates because they are of partic your bigger particle size, they are bigger your uh, nodular structure. So, they are difficult to uh, incorporate, but easy to disperse. On the contrary, if you take uh, fine structure, uh, low structure carbon black, low structure carbon black, they are easy to disperse. They, those rubber, your carbon black particles, low structure carbon black particles can be easily accommodated. But once it is accommodated, immediately they will form aggregates, and then the breaking of those aggregates is rather difficult. Why? Once they form aggregate by virtue of the surface forces, surface energy, then if you want to uh, break those aggregates, you have to uh, go for extend extended milling, extended milling in the mill. That means, you have to apply prolonged shear force in the rubber compounding machine. So, that will act again the decrease the molecular weight of the product, uh, rubber molecules, molecular size of the molecule, size of the molecules. If the size of the molecules are shortened that way, then the final mechanical properties of the ultimate mechanical properties of the final product vulcanized product will be inferior. So, these are problem. So, it is uh, so you have to take care of all this. So, for those things we have to use some processing aids because during such application of shear force it will continuously go on increasing the temperature mechanical energy will be converted to thermal energy. So, that will increase the temperature of the rubber compound and that will cause adverse effects on the rubber product. So, that is why uh, one has to have some control and compromise during compounding with these, these things. So, this is carbon black and 
by virtue of that floppy structure, by virtue of those free volumes, these ends of the rubber molecules and the segments of the rubber molecules get occluded within the porous structure. You see, a, here is some free volume, free space. Now, a part of the rubber molecular chain, say a, some segment can be occluded over there, can be entangled over there. Not only that, ends of polymer chain can be anchored over there. So, this, this kind of anchorage through occlusion of part of the segments or ends of the polymer chains will occur in our carbon fiber particle and here is the mechanism of reinforcement. This is in brief the mechanism of how reinforcing occurs because if you, you have seen there is some you, know, you see uh, wild, wild fruits with thorny surface you have seen uh, in the childhood days probably you have played with those things just you are throwing on the hair of your friend. So, it sticks to it on the head on the hair third the surface it is like that. That means, if you put a carbon black in rubber what will happen the ends of polymer chain occluded rubber then goes inside and it gets anchored and then after that once it is anchored it is difficult to separate from there. Okay. So, this is the phenomena occlusion and anchorage and this gives physical anchorage. So, physical entrapment of rubber molecules with the polymer your carbon particle and that is called uh, that, that this way it helps in reinforcement. Other than this there is some chemical interaction between carbon black and rubber chain okay. that also adds to reinforcement properties reinforcement characteristics. So, reinforcement occurs in two ways physical anchorage and chemical interaction. So, in general we can say there is physico chemical interaction, physico chemical interaction between carbon black Physicochemical interaction between carbon black and rubber molecule is known as reinforcement. This is a brief idea of reinforcing by a filler particle in rubber. There are plenty of literature available on this thing okay. that needs say a few hours to cover all these things only reinforcement mechanism. I know all these things, uh, but we do not have scope to discuss those uh, uh, in detail in this class. Non reinforcing fillers, these non reinforcing fillers they remain present within the rubber compound as simple filler just to increase the volume just to increase the volume reduce thereby reducing the cost of the product and sacrificing some mechanical properties okay, that is called inert fillers. And the examples are here you see calcium carbonate, titanium dioxide, various clays, different grades of clays are available in the market, commercial clays, china clays, soft clays, hard clays, calcium clays, graphite, magnesium carbonate, talc, French chalk. So, these are used as inert fillers and it is good for their dispersion if they are actually uh, modified with some organic material, then they, it becomes easy for the incorporation and dispersion in a rubber compound. Processing aids, peptides you know these peptides you see, you see while going to incorporate these particular additives in rubbers we need to decrease the viscosity of the raw polymer. Say for example, if the muni viscosity of the raw polymer is 50 ml 1 plus 400 degree Celsius is 50, then you cannot incorporate any of these particular additives. So, you have to bring down this muni viscosity from 50 to 35 or 40 for doing so, then you have to 
uh, apply some mechanical shear force. By mechanical shear force, it will decrease, uh, decrease the molecular weight by breaking breakdown of the molecules that is known as mastication. Mastication process breakdown of molecular length of our chain. Say suppose this is the length of a rubber chain mastication. So, it will form two part after breakdown by tearing a simple tearing by shear force here. So, two free radicals are generated. Now, this is a reversible process. They can recombine again mastication and recombination. Recombination, they can recombine again. Okay. If it is recombined, then our purpose is not served. That is, mas mastication has not affected. So, it needs more time of milling, more milling time. As you go for more milling time, then you are losing power. That means, you are costing more, you are increasing the price of the product. So, that is not advisable. So, what we need in order to prevent such type of recombination, that means, in order to avoid this process, the reversible process, reverse process, reverse path, as you do, we use peptizer. Peptizers are radical scavenger, free radical, free radical scavenger, radical scavenger. What it does? Say, if there is a free radical scavenger, so uh, a peptizer, let me say, so you the first peptizer, suppose R S H is a peptizer, a thiol type or disulfide type. Okay. So, what they do actually they thermally break down, thermally break down forming, uh, forming R S radical plus H radical or it can form 2 R S radical. Okay means this kind of radicals, these are I either R, uh, R S radical, no, no this is uh, not like this. So, these are from the uh, disulfide or peptizer molecules, then what happens? This free radical, rubber free radical which has been produced when it comes in contact with this broken peptizer radical, so it scavenges this thing forming this bond. So, by this way it prevents the recombination reaction the reverse process, it prevents the reverse process. So, peptidation occurs. So, uh, when actually in, in real um, uh, compounding phenomena, what happens? In an internal mixture, if you use peptidizer, uh, this mastication step can be completed within 3 minutes, whereas if you do not use peptidizer, it may linger up to 5 to 6 minutes okay, in one batch. So, Three to, uh, three to uh, say uh, uh, additional three minutes or four minutes times, and uh, running of such a huge machine with a huge motor, uh, you can understand what is the amount of power required for running for that period, uh, that uh, length of time. So a, a rubber mill may be as wide as uh, the breadth of this room, and height may be bigger than the height of this room your beyond ceiling for rotating and rotors are very big there for rotating such rotors using high viscosity polymer over there you can understand how much is the power consumption. So, saving that power consumption for 3 4 minutes in one batch is a, is a very big thing hmm, saving lot of price. Okay. So, for that purpose this peptides are used here you see the chemical compounds diorthobenzamidophenyl disulfide activated diorthobenzamidophenyl disulfide or zinc sulfate of pentachlorothiophenol, pentachlorothiophenol with activating and dispersing additives, metal complex on an organic carrier. Okay. These are actually used as peptizer molecules, these are commercially available in the market. Then processing aids, petroleum aids, ester plasticizers, petroleum jelly, paraffin wax, glycol, fatty acids and salts, factories, pine tar, bitumen, etc., all these things and uh, phthalate 
extra plasticizers, uh, dioctyl phthalate, dibutyl phthalate, diisooctyl phthalate, DIOP, all these things you have seen in case of plastic products, okay, these are not new. Cross-linking vulcanizing agents, as I mentioned, sulfur and related elements, sulfur bearing chemicals, non-sulfur cross-linking agents, these are vulcanizing agents used for making rubber products. Then accelerators, now there are various accelerators available in the market which are really used in commercial practice, say mostly the sulfinamide category, thiazole category, sulfinamide category, dithiocarbamate category that means starting from here thiazole, sulfinamides, dithiocarbamates, thiram sulfides, xanthates, thiocarbam sulfides, these are uh, mostly used in making rubber products. Now, actually as you pass from top to bottom, the speed of their acceleration or reaction increases from top to bottom. That means, these are all faster reacting gradually up to this. Now, if I show you some uh, formulas, you see say MBT, what is MBT? This is the MBT. I am sorry, here it will be sulphur, sulphur, this is sulphur, okay. S H, this is 2 marcapto benzothiazole. Two marker to benzothiazole known as MBT. Similarly, its disulfide is also available. Two marker to benzothiazole disulfide MBTS. Okay. Similarly, its zinc salt can be available where zinc will come in between these two sulphur, zinc, sal zinc salt, okay. Sulfinamides, sulfinamides say CBS, this is n cyclohexyl 2 marcapto benzothiazole, benzothi benzothiazole, thioazole, thioazole, benzothiazole sulfinamide okay. and dithiocarbamate I am just showing you say Z ZDEC, ZDEC zinc diethyl dithiocarbamate, zinc diethyl dithiocarbamate okay. say I am writing this structure formula ET nitrogen ET ethyl groups. This is ZDC or ZDC. Okay. Uh, achha. Then next category is TMTD, thiram disulfides, thiram sulfides, say. tetramethyl thioram disulfide okay then another is tetraethyl just in place of methyl group if you write ethyl ethyl here in place of methyl it will be tetd then xanthates 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 are actually uh, uh, again uh, same type of formula but uh, they are Xanthate accelerators. 
জানতে চাচ্ছি এটা জানথেট জানথেট এসুন জানথেট অ্যাকচুয়ালি দিস ইজ রং ইট শুড বি থাই ও নট থি শো এস শুড বি ড্রপড ওভার হিয়ার দিস ইজ রং হেয়ার থাই ও কারমাবিল সালফিনামাইড If you have a doubt, you can discuss with me after this discuss. Okay. Thiocarbamyl sulfonamide. What is this thiocarbamyl sulfonamide? Is look. This is a thiocarbamyl sulfonamide. This is actually thiocarbamyl bond. Sulfonamide, thiocarbamyl. Salt of thiocarbamic acid. If you do not know the chemistry, it is difficult for you to understand. So, I am not going to that depth. Okay. So, this is thiocarbamyl sulfonamide. And uh, you can have other thiocarbamyl sulfonamide like CH3, or say, say you can take morpholine. Sorry, CS. This is S. S N again morpholin. This is actually uh, OTOS. You write 18 OTOS. Hmm. Oxy diethylene, oxy diethylene thiocarbamyl N single bond C double bond S single bond S N again uh, diethylene thiocarbamyl sulfonamide it is actually called oxy the name is The Monsanto chemical product. In the trade name, you write 18. Thank you very much.